Bueno.
Сейчас что, надо жрать. Что же эти штучки? Это штучечник. Это штучка. Спорное утверждение, спорные вопросы.
officials. Not unofficial. Checking. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Piano TV. So today we are going to talk about a composer that has been requested a lot, and that is Franz Schubert, who was very sort of unhappy composer. He didn't live very long. He only lived to age 31. So in today's video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about his life, his personality, his death, and not too much about his music, because I'm going to save that for the next video, just so we can give it like full coverage so I don't like let him down. He had a lot of music, so there's a lot to talk about there. So anyway, let's just get right into it. Schubert was born in 1797 and he died in 1828, so a very short life. And that time period makes him a transitional composer from the classical period to the romantic period, much like Beethoven was in his later years, actually. He was born in Vienna. His Vienna up there. His dad was a teacher and his mom was a housemaid. It was a he had a pretty humble origin. He had some brothers and sisters, um, and he went to his dad's school where he received music lessons and you know from his dad and also from his older brothers. It was actually Antonio Salieri who first took notice of Schubert's talent as a vocalist, especially. So if you've ever seen the movie Amadeus, which you should, it's an awesome movie about Mozart. Salieri is Mozart's rival in the movie, and like it's speculated that they were rivals in real life as well. So Schubert was accepted into the Stad Convict School at age 11 thanks to Salieri, um, and he had a vocal scholarship for it. Once Schubert's talent became even more evident, even at such an early age, like young to mid-teenager, he was writing a lot of compositions, and he was leading the symphony at the school sometimes, Antonio Salieri decided to take like a, a special interest in him and gave him like private tutoring and stuff like that. So that takes us to the year 1814. Schubert was 17 years old at the time, and he was like, okay, well, I'm done school now, and he went to work for his dad, as kids sometimes do. So he worked as a teacher at his dad's school, but he hated it. He, I mean, Schubert wasn't really like a, like a working kind of person. Around that time in his late teens, he also fell in love with a girl. I, didn't, I almost sang that, but I didn't. And her name was Therese. She was a singer. And Schubert wrote like, lots of songs for her to sing, but there was actually kind of a crazy law back then that unless, as a man, like, you couldn't marry a woman unless you could prove that you had 
the wealth, like the income to support a family. And since Schubert wasn't like a, like a worker, in the traditional sense, he obviously didn't have that. And then there's the part about, he wasn't exactly the most desirable person. In, both in like his physical appearance and his personality, but we'll talk about that more in a bit. So in 1816, he decided to quit working at his father's school. He's like, I'm tired of this job thing. And he decided to move in with a close friend of his, Schobert, and Schobert's mom. At first, Schubert tried to, like sort of half-heartedly, tried to make an income doing private music lessons, but he wasn't really into it. And what he is the second and Schobert's mom. At first, Schubert tried to, like, sort of half-heartedly, tried to make an income doing private music lessons, <laughs> but he wasn't really into it. And what he, this is the sort of just ended up falling by the wayside. And what he was doing instead was just composing, like, tons. Like, at this point, he was only 19, but he had already written hundreds of compositions, and that was from everything from, like, symphonies to, like, tons of vocal works called leaders. So Schubert's roommate, Schober, it's a little bit confusing to say that, Schobert was responsible for introducing Schubert to a man named Johann Vogel, who was a famous baritone singer at the time. And Vogel was quite a bit older than Schubert, but they formed a friendship of mutual respect. And Vogel, since he was sort of famous and influential, he brought Schubert into like the Viennese music scene. And because of Vogel, Schubert made a lot of really important friends and a lot of really important contacts. And they used to like all have parties, where Schubert would like play music at these private parties and he'd play the piano and someone like Vogel would do the singing. And Schubert wrote a lot of pieces with Vogel's voice in mind. And he did that a lot with his music. He wrote with specific singers in mind. So around this time, Schubert, he wasn't having any luck with publishing. And even though he was writing tons of music, he just wasn't very well known, so people really weren't publishing him. And he tried to get into doing stage shows like operas. He, tried doing like over 20 of them but they all like bombed basically like for just for one reason or another like political censorship or like drama with the the singers and all kinds of stuff like that so he just wasn't having a lot of financial success and he wasn't getting very well known but the theme of his life is despite all of these hardships he was still writing tons of music so then 1825 rolled around, Schubert would have been around 28 years old. And you know, like he was starting to have some successes in life. He was making a little bit of money. He was able to publish some of his music and he even went on like a little little private tour to Austria. And he didn't really travel much in his, like he didn't have the, either the money or the inclination to travel. So that was like a happy time in his life. And for the last few years of his life, he continued to write lots of music. Surprise, surprise. In 1828, he also gave the only public performance of his own works, because prior to that, all of his performances had been private, in like his personal performances, where he you know, was playing at a party or something like that. This is something we'll find in the next video when we talk about the music of Schubert, but you really only get a sense of who he really was as a person by listening to his music. Because he, he didn't live an exciting outer life. He was very reserved. And for him, it was he had this like very glorious inner life that came out through his music. So it's only, only his music where you could really see his brilliance. It wasn't in his outward personality. But before we get into all of that, we gotta talk about his death, because that's that's next. It's it happened in 1828. That's about where we are in his story. So Schubert officially died of typhoid fever, although in 1823 he did contract syphilis. And I mean the official records state that he died of the fever, and that's probably true. But I think it's it's a possibility that there were some uh, symptoms of syphilis and mercury poisoning playing into it. Near the end of his life, like especially in the last year, Schubert was like pretty confident. He knew that death was approaching. He was like like pretty in touch with that. He was expressing his fears to his friends and he was expe expressing a lot of themes of death in his music. And a couple hours before he died, when he was sick and delirious, he grabbed his doctor's arm and he said, here, here is my death. So Schubert knew what was up. So as for the mercury poisoning, it was a really common thing back then to treat syphilis with mercury, with medicine that had mercury in it. So it was a pretty common thing to happen at the time. And we don't know conclusively if he like actually died from the fever or if there were just some symptoms of mercury poisoning or like a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. But regardless of his manner of death, the one thing that at least you can say is his death happened pretty quickly. So I mean, maybe that's a small mercy. 
he actually only, like his final illness was actually only a couple weeks long. And he'd only been like really considering the possibility of death for a couple of years at most. Whereas some composers like Beethoven, they spend decades, like not even just years, but decades, just slowly degrading. So it, in a way, it's like what's worse? He could have maybe lived longer and more music, but then he would have had to suffer for a lot of long time. I don't know. This isn't a morality channel. Schubert was buried next to Beethoven as for his request in his birthplace of Vienna. Schubert's early death at age 31 was obviously like a huge shock to his friends. But despite only living for 31 years, this is like it blows my mind how much music he wrote. He wrote over 1,500 songs. Like, think about that for a second. And, and not all of them are just like little tiny leaders that are like two minutes long. Some of those are symphonies. 1,500! Schubert never really achieved fame in his lifetime. He had a social circle of musicians who considered him a genius, and some people in his social circle were quite famous at the time, but Schubert himself never really made it. And I think there's a few reasons for that that, that we can talk about. I mean, I think part of it is he was maybe a little bit before his time. He was on the cusp of a new generation of music, but being a transitional composer, maybe some of his music didn't exactly resonate with the people of his time, and more it resonated with the people after his death. Because there were a lot of romantic composers, especially Liszt, who helped to bring Schubert's music into the public eye. And what, what Liszt did is he took some songs by Schubert and he arranged them for piano. And he, like, obviously everything Liszt touched turned to gold. So he was a really big proponent to Schubert. He said that Schubert was the, the most poetic musician who ever lived and was a big force in bringing Schubert's music to the light. There were other romantic composers too, like Mendelssohn and Brahms and Schumann, who also championed Schubert's works and helped, you know, bring him out of obscurity. And now, obviously, he's one of the most famous composers who ever lived, but it was largely because of these guys. And there were people like Berlioz and Dvorak who really liked and respected his symphonies. So, yeah, lots of love for Schubert from the next generation. Schubert was not a beautiful man. In fact, his friends called him Schwammerl, which translates roughly to little mushroom, because he was really small. Like he was, and he was also pretty stocky. He was less than five feet tall. He was a little, it was just a little guy. And aside from, you know, being really short, he was also nearsighted and he wore glasses, like with spectacles all the time. And he wasn't a very outgoing personality type. Actually, he was quite the opposite. He's very shy and sort of antisocial, so that didn't help him very much in the romance department. I think a big part of why Schubert never achieved fame, and this, I don't mean it in a harsh way, but I think part of that was his personality. And he, he was just not a self-promoter, is I guess maybe a better way to say it. It's not like that he necessarily had a bad personality, he just wasn't social. I mean, word of his talent really was only confined to his, his small, but influential, but small, social circle. Like, he never really put himself out there. But the thing I find really cool about Schubert is he had, like, such clarity about his life purpose at such a young age that, like, so many people never achieved. Like, he actually wrote, I have come into the world for no purpose but to compose. And because of this single-minded focus, like, he really did that. He succeeded in his life mission. And because he was so single-mindedly focused only on composing, he didn't care about promotion. He didn't care about, like, putting himself out there or, like, being a social person. He knew what he wanted to do, and he did it. And I mean, in a way, his music got promoted anyway. We, he's a very famous composer now, so I guess you could even say, even though he wasn't famous in his lifetime, and he didn't care about fame, he didn't care about wealth, people still ended up promoting him anyway, and his music still got out to the world. So we can't say that that was a character flaw. So ultimately, Schubert was this unhappy, unsocial guy on the outside, but on the inside, in his inner world, the world of his music, uh, there was so much beauty and inspiration and exuberance and joy. So he is really like the, a great example of the old saying that you can't judge a book by its cover. So that is all for today's video on the history of Schubert, talking about his life, his personality. So in the next video, I really hope you'll come and visit me for it. We are going to explore the music of Schubert, his musical style, the things that he innovated, and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy history videos and you know these kind of videos in general, give them a like. I really appreciate it when you do. And if you have any requests for future videos, as always, feel free to leave a comment and we'll, we'll 
area below. And I will catch you guys next time. I can't feel like that. Ooh. No! ずっと不安なままだった私たち、まあ、お仲間だよあ、困った時
ちはお互い座ってね I am here to sign a document betting ten thousand dollars that my last video is in fact correct. This is the video in question. Some people may have missed it, but in this car there is no motor, no batteries. No energy source besides the wind itself. And the counterintuitive claim is that this car can maintain speeds faster than the wind that's pushing it. There is a physics professor at UCLA who got in touch to say that he thought that I was wrong, that the explanation was wrong. You know, we went back and forth a little bit, and eventually I said, well, how about we bet $10,000? I can prove it to you. This vehicle really can't go downwind faster than the wind. And to my surprise, he is taking me up on the bet. Look, no, no one is perfect, uh, but uh, you have a much lower error rate than most uh, people on YouTube, in YouTube space. Now, Professor 